Now, in the middle of all of these dialogues, we have a section called Underrated, Overrated. I'm going to name some things, some people, and ask you if you think they're overrated or underrated. <laughs> and feel free to pass on any one of them. But let's start with rap music. Oh. I, I never got rap music, so I don't want to say it's overrated. It may be that I'm overrated, and that I, uh, <laughs> or at least my, I overrate myself. But I just, I, I just know. I, mean, I was born. I was probably born too soon. But there's a much younger Steven Pinker on YouTube debating with William F. Buckley, and Steven Pinker of that time is defending Black English, and telling William F. Buckley he basically doesn't understand what's special about it, and indeed Buckley doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> so is rap music, in a sense, not just a musical extension of the black English you once defended on Firing Line? Well, uh, it is in the sense that I would not make the argument that there's anything, that the fact that I don't have any rap music on my, uh, on my iPod is not an argument for the objective merit or of rap music compared to any other kind of music. There I'm a relativist. Uh, and likewise, the uh, grammatical structure of African-American English ver vernacular, as linguists call it, uh, black English, Ebonics, uh, it, it, there's really n nothing inherently to choose between the rules in, in uh, uh, black English vernacular and any other English vernacular. There, I'm also a relativist. On the other hand, when it comes to uh, what dialect we should use in uh, the uh, in, in formal essays, in the academic literature, in the New York Times, it's good to have a standard. The standard could have been black English if history had run differently. It doesn't happen to be. It's good that we all settle on a standard to maximize communication and efficiency and, and uh, uh, certain aesthetic judgments. Um, so the standardization is a good thing, but that doesn't necessarily mean that one standard is uh, inherent objectively better than another. Aerobic exercise, underrated or overrated? Oh, <laughs> uh, 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 underrated. I like it. You like it, yeah. And you think I do it's it. good for you? I, I hope so, because I, <laughs> I do. I, I like to think that I'm also accomplishing something when I uh, when I go jogging or, or cycling. Behavioral economics, economists playing at psychology. Obviously, you have a, a stronger background in psychology than the economists. What do you think of behavioral econ? Uh, I'm, I'm for it. Uh, What's it missing? I, well, I think it's, I do think that it's missing, and I'm, I'm completely out of my uh, depth here, but I, I do think that it is too quick to dismiss classical economics to, um, I, I don't think there is maybe another false dichotomy, but that uh, the idea that uh, the rational actor and models derived from it are obsolete because humans make certain irrational choices, have certain rules of thumb that can't be normatively defended, uh, those aren't necessarily incompatible because even though every individual human brain might have its quirks and be irrational, it is possible for a collective enterprise that wor works by certain rules to have a kind of rationality that none of the individual minds has. Also, it's possible, because we're, we're corrigible, because the mind is, is many parts, we can override some of our uh, biases and, and instincts, uh, either through confrontations with reality, through education, through debate. And we do know that um, uh, even though that, that people who are experienced in market transactions, for example, um, don't fall for the kinds of fallacies that behavior economic, behavioral economists are so fond of pointing out. You really can't turn a person into a money pump, even though in the lab I can set up a demo that shows that people can be intransitive in their preferences. But you actually put a person in a situation where there's real money at stake, and all of a sudden they're not so irrational. They walk away. The yeah. passive voice in writing. Uh, it has its uh, underrated. Well, underrated. It, yeah, underrated. Yeah, the, in in the following sense, you open up any style manual, and it uh, one of the first bits of advice is uh, don't use the passive. That's too crude. Academics overuse the passive, or maybe I should say the passive voice is overused by <laughs> academics. That's better. That is. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, no, it, it is thought as such by many people. It is, so it is thought, <laughs> <laughs> but it is. Uh, yeah, it, 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 the, the case is, is, is overdrawn uh, because no construction could have survived in the language for more than 1,500 years if it didn't serve some purpose. And there are circumstances in which the passive is the better choice. In particular, when you have to, when the topic of the conversation, the 
entity that's already the, uh, in the spotlight is the done to or acted upon, another rule of style, aside from avoiding the passive, is start the sentence with uh, the, the given information, the topic, end the sentence with the new information, the, the, the focus. If you're already talking about something that is uh, done to, then that's the logical way to begin the next sentence, and the passive voice makes that possible. Uh, if I'm talking about, uh, if I'm saying, you know, look at the, that uh, mime in the park, he's being pelted with zucchini, uh, then since I've already called your attention to the mime, now I want to add information about him. If he happens to be the, the, the brunt of an action, then the passive voice is the way to the, begin the next sentence with him, as opposed to saying, some people are throwing zucchini at him, where he gets put in the focus of the sentence, which is the best place to introduce new information. And in fact, as I point out in the sense of style, uh, the two most famous style guides in the English language, namely Orwell's Politics in the English Language and Strunk and White's The Elements of Style, both accidentally use the passive in the very <laughs> sentence in which they say, don't <laughs> use the passive. <laughs> William Shatner. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You're fellow, connected to him in several ways. Oh, fellow Montreal Jew. I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I have to say underrated. Underrated. No, although maybe not as singing. <laughs> Here's Susan. You're well known for your photography. Here's Susan Sontag writing on photography. And I quote, photographing is essentially an act of non-intervention. And she also wrote, it is mainly a social right, a defense against anxiety, and a tool of power. Overrated. Yes or no? Overrated. Yeah. Photography is or Susan Sontag? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, that, maybe just that passage. Uh, I, I, you know, like, like any art form, photography is many things. And, uh, you know, f and first and foremost, it's a kind of, uh, it's a, uh, a simulacrum of perceptual experience. It's possible because uh, visual perception doesn't consist of... Uh, of, of knowing the external world directly, but rather making hypotheses about it via a two-dimensional array of light that's reflected from it. You duplicate that two-dimensional array of light with pigment or, or LEDs, and you can fool the perceiver into thinking that he's seeing the actual thing. Uh, that is then in tension with the fact that the photograph itself is a splash of geometric and, and, and uh, colored uh, patches. And the challenge of photography is to both <laughs> convey uh, a sense of something out there, but also for that two-dimensional patch to itself be an aesthetically pleasing object. And as a photographer, it's, I'm always cognizant of what will that two-dimensional um, uh, patchwork of color look like, and what is it a photograph of? If you think on all the different things you've written in various areas, what do you think has been your biggest mistake? Oh, where do I begin? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, where to begin? Um, biggest mistake. Uh, maybe I'm going to punt on that. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Well, why don't I just say that, so as not to convey the impression <laughs> that I've never made mistakes. <laughs> There's so many, where do I begin? 